A very warm welcome to season 7 of EI Cafe with Azim and I'm your host Azim Said, a human capital specialist, a Lego C display facilitator and an EI practitioner, an ICF certified coach as well. You heard the title, you heard the topic. It's a really important one. Innovation culture. Is it an investment? Is my question to the guest who's in the cafe for today. Let me introduce him. He's a leader bringing three decades of global experience in financial services, fast moving consumer goods, airlines, retail, fintech, consulting, and business mentoring. He has led large teams across multiple continents in over 45 plus countries, and is passionate about mentoring young and inspiring individuals to change the world around them. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome Mohammed Al Tajir, partner at Tough Love, speaker and an innovator. Assalamu alaikum, Azim. Assalamu alaikum, Mohammed, and a very good morning to you. Alaikum assalam. Good morning to you. Very happy to be with you, Azim. Thank you very much for the invitation. It's my pleasure and honor to have you in my cafe as well. So, uh, first here. and foremost, uh, thank you very much. I know we have been trying to really uh, get along for some time, but yes, today is the time, I think, the actual finally, time, right? Finally. finally. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Muhammad, I think that the topic is very close to you. Um, I think uh, I, I um, read uh, an interesting article on your LinkedIn as well. So it, it let me really blend the introduction for the topic as well. The dinosaurs, right? I love so, it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, just to um, you know, start off the conversation, I, I like to ask this particular question. Like, everybody is talking about innovation. We have been talking yeah. a lot. We have seen a lot of innovations coming in. Now, what is your opinion? Why innovation matters in today's context? Your thought. Uh, Okay, I, I think there are a few things actually when I actually researched the topic of innovation, which is very close to my heart. You know, uh, when I was young, I was the guy who used to, if you remember the old radios, you know, at home. Yeah. I was the one who is basically breaking them, trying to get, you know, as, try to see what's uh, the components and, you know, try to get the magnets in the speaker and, and do something else with it. So my, ha my father was not happy with that, obviously, but I had that you know, within me uh, from a very young age. So uh, the topic of innovation was always dear to me throughout my career, in fact. So I did a bit of research and I found out as per, you know, I wrote in the article, which is published in Fortune, is that the Fortune 500, uh, you know, uh, largest companies uh, that made the list, uh, the first list back in 19, I think 55 or 56, only, uh, uh, for uh, only 10% of them remained until mm. uh, May last year, 2022, which is interesting, fascinating. And so 490 companies left the chart wow. and then only 10%. So, and, and the other thing, I also read an article or a study or a piece of research by, by uh, now I can't recall the name of the, um, mm. of the professor who wrote it, but anyways, you find it in the article. He found out that the mortality rate, you know, if there is such a term for a company, is reducing, meaning mm -hmm. that uh, the the inception and the death of of a company is becoming shorter. That cycle is becoming shorter. So going back to your question, uh, why is it important? It's unfortunately because there are, you know, uh, you know, with the with the uh, industrial revolution, the fourth industrial revolution. Now everything is available. And I'm sure you've heard about Jet GPT and other stuff that mm -hmm. came suddenly out of yeah. nowhere and got people caught people off guard. And even now, the likes of Google, who we thought, okay, the, the technology company is also kind of, you know, uh, reassessing their uh, position. And also, I've heard recently uh, that Microsoft is doing the same. You mm -hmm. know, they have the, they they will have their own uh, Chat GPT version. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you know, to stay afloat, as you rightly said, the, the, you know, the dinosaurs did not, could not adopt for whatever reason, we don't know. Mm. But 
you know, and, and it's very interesting because I have also interest in, in you know, with uh, from the animal kingdom. Two animals actually, which adopted from that dinosaur age until now, are basically the the crocodile and the cockroach, oh. and they were the most yeah. And in fact, there are there is research that cockroaches can withstand a nuclear uh, basically disaster. Mm -hmm. God gave them some something, you know. So and they, in fact, they they can predict uh, earthquakes and stuff. Mm. So it's the survival is for the most adaptable, as we know. And this, but the, the 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 aha moment for me was this cycle is becoming shorter. Mm -hmm. So unless, mm -hmm. uh, and they say success is you know the navigation between failures. Absolutely. And then the term, the new term of MVP, minimum viable product, it forces you to do things faster. Mm -hmm. In fact, you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. And trying to be ahead, trying to to take that share of mind mm -hmm. of your clients, customers, mm -hmm. consumers. And the only way is by trying and testing new things to keep you updated, to be, to keep you relevant. Mm. And uh, I know it's a, sh a long answer to a short question, but just uh, I'd, I'd like to end it with 20 years plus ago, I read an article at Harvard Business Review, which says that pharmaceutical companies, one third of their cost is docked against innovation. And to make a drug, uh, it, it it will take you 10 years to develop and it, mm. it costs around, you know, to the tune of $1 billion mm. that was 20 years ago. Mm. So what happens by year nine, you basically find out that this drug has fatal side effects. Then mm. you have to basically come up uh, let with go. One. Exactly, come up with new one. So, mm. but this is the, you know, the, the, the dilemma is people, uh, the pharmaceutical companies will see that as an investment because mm, they learned mm, other stuff on the way. Mm, 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 mm. Unfortunately, a lot of other industries see it as a cost. Say, oh, mm. you have lost, you know, $1 billion to develop something mm, that mm. has no use. I mean, mm. if you remember in the old days, Google created the Google glasses. Yeah. It's no longer there. Yeah. But they took the knowledge of, of that product or that uh, invention and implemented elsewhere. Absolutely. I think I think that's, that's um, how dinosaurs could would have been lived if they really adapt. Um, if you really see um, dinosaurs, like in terms of corporates, like the big names, like the Nokia's, um, the Blockbusters, the Kodaks, um, that, that, that's the example which comes to our mind when we say about like uh, uh, failures who didn't adapt. Um, if I ask you the question, like how not to become a dinosaur? How do you reflect this? For the future business, what do you think? You have to read the article. <laughs> 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 you no, know, but in a, in, a, in a nutshell, you know, uh, this should be uh, ingrained as a culture and starts from the top and mm. ends at the top. Mm. That you know, uh, as we say, you know, imagine you have your own child, you know, and he is, uh, let's say, one year old. So mm -hmm. when he starts crawling and then mm -hmm. he starts walking, he will start to stand up and he will fall. Mm -hmm. What happens if you help that ch child whenever he, he falls to hold him up? He will never learn how to walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is, unfortunately, there is no golden recipe or, you know, somebody will come from, with a parachute to give you inject, uh, you know innovation or inject it in your, mm -hmm. your arm or, you know, mm -hmm. it has to be, a, a culture mm. and it has to start uh, from the top mm. and the, you know the, the the other mistake that leaders do is that even if wherever they start to, you know telling their organization if we go west or north or whatever they don't check mm -hmm. they think by default they assume and i always tell everyone all my teams do not assume do not assume you you know you check mm. before mm. you start Mm. So you put a rule saying, okay, you know what? I'll give you 10% of your budget should be docked against innovation. And you, mm. come, you should come up with, with some ideas. ideas and show me. Mm. I need to go back, you know, and check what mm. are these ideas? Where are they? Because people forget. I mean, mm. classic example, the uh, basically the goals or the KPIs. We put them beginning of the year or end of the previous year and we 
pick up that piece of paper or that email. Again, end of the year. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, two weeks before the evaluation. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which is sad. You know, feedback and, you know, this this should be done every day. So, Mohammed, here, what I'm hearing from you, um, it, it is a culture, right? In a way, it's in a culture. And I think, you know, I, we have been dealing with many corporates. We always get an opportunity to, to work on innovation, culture, how do the transformation do... But every time what we go and hear is people say, those who are employees say, look, they are saying to us to change. They are trying to come to you, but they are not really helping us. I mean, the top player. Yes, yes. So and the conversation now, the yeah, the conversation you are saying now, it's a, it's, it's a role of a leader as well to make sure that it has been empowered, encouraged, keep on yeah. track to make yeah, this happen. Yeah. Otherwise, um, just decision on the top, execution on the bottom will not make. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah, v very true, very true. And this is spot on. And I'd like to talk about this because I see it every day. I have seen it before in all the organization I worked for. Mm -hmm. uh, you see that what is the difference between a, you know, a, a large organization and a startup? Mm -hmm. The large organization is always uh, designed for efficiency, mm -hmm. for scale, uh, for incremental improvements, mm -hmm. uh, and reducing cost, the cost of unit or, or the service or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So they're not geared up for innovation. Now, innovation is uh, is risky. You know, let's mm -hmm. not, uh, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Yani sugar coated. Okay, okay. Uh, it, it is the cost. The example I gave you about the pharmaceutical company. Yes. You might yes. make a big disaster at year nine. Yeah. But that is okay because it should be factored in your cost. Correct. That's the cost of staying alive, staying afloat, staying relevant, mm -hmm. and st staying adaptable. Mm -hmm. uh, so large organizations are not geared up for innovation, disruptive mm -hmm. innovation. They are geared up for incremental innovation, which mm -hmm. if you take, for instance, the, the iPhone or yeah. Samsung Galaxy towards one camera and they added to another camera and then... Yeah, just a small change. God knows. <laughs> exactly. Now three cameras. And next thing, I, I, there will be four cameras and God knows. You know, that's <laughs> incremental change. But when was the last time you, you saw a disruptive... Uh, mm -hmm. innovation from Apple, let's say. It was the iPhone. At, at first of all, it was the computer, the Mac, then the iPhone, and then the iPad. iPod, iPod as well. Or, or the iPad, yeah, uh, and the iPod. In the span, I don't know now, it's maybe 40 years. Uh, company. Maybe, so yeah, it has yeah. Me yeah, I don't think it's more than that. But you talk about maybe four or five products at max. Major mm, disruption, mm, mm, mm. but within that they do this, and this is known and within mm. big companies. Now, what happens? Big companies, and uh, they they focus on the large segments. Mm. They are not interested in the small segments niches, mm. Mm. but financially because of the they come their huge costs etc. Mm. So they leave those uh, small niches to you know others, small companies, startups. They say, oh. This is an uh, tapped niche. You know, big mm. companies are not focusing on, mm. let's say, mm. I don't know if, if I take, you know, uh, a city in, in Sri Lanka, you know, with a certain indigenous population, yeah. you know, where, you know, it doesn't make sense for, you know, to create something for them. Mm. A startup mm. will come and create something for them because nobody is there to serve these. This is unserved yeah. need. Yeah. And they will, you know, uh, and then normally, a startup, you have a founder and probably two or three team members. That's it. Correct. And Correct. probably the rest is outsourced and whatever. So they're more geared up to change things. They they can pivot. And mm. I'm working with startups. Mm. You know, you start with something and then you, you test it and you said, oh, it doesn't work this way. Let's change it a little bit. Let's move this. You know? And sometimes, you know, you check it and say, oh, you know what? This is not what the customer we thought that they want. We'll give them something else. So disruption comes always from a smaller niche player, which mm -hmm. you can see now all these acquisitions of if somebody mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. up, you know, with, let's say, take, uh, you know, uh, GPT. Mm. Uh, I think WhatsApp GPT. or the, uh, TikTok yeah. or Twitter, or everything is yeah. like, like a small startup. It's like turning into exactly. a giant and two, three, Absolutely. Over. Two, three people start it and then it becomes success, phenomenal success quick. 
and said, oh, when this giant wake up, said, oh, this is either I create something yeah. and compete with them or like Uber in, in the region, Uber bought Kareem. Kareem was the the, the Uber, but for, for the region. Mm. They competed with them. They couldn't uh, make them sustain. basically sustain. Mm. And they said, you know what? We'll, we'll buy them. Mm. 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 Fantastic. I think what I hear from you is like... Um, the agility part comes in, in terms of innovation as well. That's what I'm hearing from you. Agility is really important um, because the, the amount to fail, how you quickly come in, you adapt to the situation, you know, so you want to sustain and thrive in a particular market An organization need to really have innovation as part and parcel of their value system, um, pillars or strategy, um, because otherwise they will be like the dinosaur. Yes, actually, I forgot one point, which is a very important point. You see, if you want to uh, implement the policies, the structures, the regulations of the big company on a, on on innovation, you will fail yeah. because it does not follow mm. your day to day mainline business. Mm. So you have mm. to create a separate structure where people are free to fail. Mm, mm, there is no mm. judgment there is no mm. repercussions if you mm. fail if you lose you know you know the case of the pharmaceutical company you think that they will fire the scientists who no. were behind the... <laughs> they'll be encouraging they will, you know exactly exactly and that's the thing you know people are afraid and i've seen it you know many times afraid to suggest an idea because what if it fails mm, mm. and the other thing um, large companies or established companies are always after the results. Mm, mm. Uh, they want to maximize gross margins and mm. reduce the cost. Mm. So if there is anything that will increase the cost with mm. a, with no certainty, mm. the CFO will shoot it down. Mm, 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 mm. And I remember in my, my previous uh, company I worked for, I told uh, the CFO, I, I want to, I'm, I'm carving out a certain percentage of, of the budget that I fought for to get my team play with it. I told them play with it. And don't ask me about ROI because their, uh, my ROI to them is to learn and mm. to experiment. Mm. That is the ROI. Mm. 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 So you tell me how many people would go to their CFOs and tell them this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a question. Unless they see value, Yes. they will not let you in. And, you know, the thing is that you start small, you experiment mm. and then mm. once you have successes then you make mm. it bigger mm. i think i think if you i think that's how the many large organization has been really really you know moving towards a lot of new things now if you really say google right you know we have the global positioning gps they're coming with the vps video positioning system so i think that's all the hard work the investment on innovation on people i think that's the result what we get so mohammed interestingly i just want to like you mentioned about people now when we say about innovation, innovation can result in a change. In something coming new, it can result in change. Or processes, policies, and procedures, systems can change when new thing comes. Yeah. With your experience, why people resist to change? What do you think? Uh, that's <laughs> an, a very good question. Uh, people or in general, we, we are human beings. We are, we are, uh, we like predictability. Mm. Change is always requires effort. Mm. And if there is any way I can do it more, less effort for me, I mm. will take the shortcut. That's a human psyche. Mm. Mm. Uh, we like know, to be in the comfort and, zone. And exactly. The comfort zone. And it's not for everyone. And I take that. But the thing is that, you know, and I, I don't expect everybody to be an innovator in, in the company. It is for some, as you have the bell curve, you know, everywhere. Mm -hmm. So some will excel at it, some will hate it, some, the average will say, you know what, let's let's go with it, you know, we'll see mm -hmm. what happens. Mm -hmm. So change is always difficult because uh, it requires you to do things that you are not ac accustomed to do. Mm -hmm. As you said, going out of the comfort zone and not mm -hmm. a lot of people you you'll find unfortunately you know the the the, the word the herd mentality herd mentality yes mm -hmm. you you need one leader one sheep to go east and then everybody will everybody follow goes, yeah. people like to follow <laughs> unfortunately you know and you will find those innovators 
if you take Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or whoever, you know, they are not your conventional uh, people, not your mm. conventional personalities. Mm. If somebody mm. says, you know, they they ask fundamental questions mm. that make mm. you think, stop. Mm. Mm. But you'll find a lot of people, you know, I, I'll give you an example. Last week uh, I was traveling. It was such a, I was checking in. I didn't check online. Uh, and I've seen that uh, the officer on the counter, she was printing a boarding pass without even asking me. I said, why didn't you ask me uh, which seat I, I would like? She said, no, 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 this is the system generated. I will print you one with it. I told her, why waste, uh, you know, one? Uh, <laughs> I think I saw that post on pass. LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's such a simple. And honestly, I had a lot of uh, interaction on that post. I didn't th think it yeah. was a big deal. But the thing is, if she had probably thought, you know what, instead of if, why can't we do all? It's like in your supermarket now, they ask you about your mobile number and will send you the bill on the, your email. mobile. They will not even yeah. print. Mm -hmm. So why can't we do that? Even if we, I don't do online checking, you can do it. You know, ask me about my mobile. I get it. I get the boarding pass on my, I mean, you know, think like this and imagine the improvement that you can do still. There are a lot of uh, broken processes. Processes, mm. Process. Mm. Uh, you know, if you think the air, you know, the aircraft or these air, you know, very high tech. But the process to to do them, I mean, mm. to to take the passenger is very much twentieth uh, mm. century. Yeah, I think I think um, as you said, the herd mentality, like the frontliners, have been asked to do only this particular task, so they are mm. focusing on that task. And not even bothered, okay, why don't we do that? Why should I suggest like this? You know, we can save cost. I think that encouragement is not there. I think that's why that piece of the culture, innovation culture, and adding into their KPIs, you know, or, or, or anything that JDs can really transform an organization. What What would you thought of that? Actually, I would go and, and you know, very interesting uh, thought that you brought in. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, the educational system mm. globally, I'm not yani, choosing a country to talk about, globally is geared up to, uh, to basically uh, graduate, you know, good high performing employees, mm. Mm. Not, mm. Em not entrepreneurs, not thinkers. I remember, uh, I think uh, the inventor of uh, Spanx, which is mm. that thing, uh, I think Sarah Blinken, if I'm not mistaken, the name. Uh, uh, she gave a, a very nice example of her father. She, mm. It was her her and the, her brother. Mm. Uh, and she said, whenever we come for dinner and we sit on the table with my father, and he used to ask a very strange question, which is, how many times did you fail today? And what did you fail at? If you think, you know, always, uh, you know, with the, with, yeah. with your kids, that you will ask them, oh, what did you do at school? Exactly. And if they don't do well, then, mm -hmm. you know. We go the other way around. The... <laughs> <laughs> but in this case, because what? Uh, the more you fail, the more you learn. Absolutely. You learn more actually from failures rather than successes. Absolutely. And I think that is one of the things is that you have to go back to the school system, mm -hmm. to, to your house. So I think the good thing about my father, I owe it to him, is that probably he did not hit me or, you know, t you know, uh, shout at me whenever I, you know, screwed the up the, uh, the radio, which made me the person I am right now. I think that curiosity, I think it's leading the whole, right? How is it yeah. working? What is it? And then that curiosity is missing when people, you know, sit on the day-to-day -day job and because they've been getting to processes, routine and ask, et cetera, et cetera, that the... the, the encouragement or the psychological safety is not given um, for people to really adapt to this particular change. And that's what I believe. Um, Muhammad, quickly, just when you said about the process, like the innovation process, what would be, you know, your experience? Because in we say or oh, innovation, you know, we can talk about design thinking. Eh? It's a process. We, we can say a seven-step model, um, quarter seven-step model. We, we, there are many elements. Then it's specific you think um, you have experienced any particular processes in terms of innovation process where people can really know for our listeners to really understand how does it work? 
Look, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, organizations have enough processes to start with. Okay. So what, if you have a product, uh, it's always the simplest product wins, you know, the mm. simplest design, the mm. simplest product. So I would suggest that, you know, each leader just advise their teams to allocate a certain resource, budget, mm. time, mm. and uh, resource to, mm. to try to try things. Mm. Let them play. You know, mm. I remember if you remember you remember Hotmail in the old days. Yes, yes. Hotmail was in, in you know invented by an Indian uh, you know tech uh, guy who used to work for Microsoft in his spare time because Microsoft used to give I think was a twenty percent of your time you can do whatever you want with it. Right. So he came up with that you know uh, and that was the start of all emails you know mm -hmm. in that twenty twenty percent of the time. So just keep it simple. Don't make it too complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, with with you know if, uh, you know uh, I I can give you uh, and there are many many pro ways to do it but to but say it. okay I will allocate a budget we'll mm -hmm. put a committee and mm -hmm. that's the worst thing you can do honestly <laughs> because it will stifle innovation people will get scared mm -hmm. and instead mm -hmm. I'll give you another example as as you uh, the Ritz Carlton and 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 I'm talking out of you know direct experience. I was speaking to the general manager of one of their ex general mm. manager of one. Mm. They give, I think it was two thousand dollars to front basically staff. The the staff that meets has contacts with the customer with the, okay. with, the with the guest. Right. Whether it's the housekeeping or front desk or mm. you know. Um, yeah. So these the, anybody who has interaction with the customer. So what is the idea behind this two thousand dollars? They should spend it in the areas they think will enhance the guest experience. Mm -hmm. No question asked. Mm -hmm. And I remember this GM of Ritz, he was addressing us all bankers, maybe you're talking about 50 to 100 people. And immediately the bankers responsible, okay, how do we trust them? So we had to have an audit on that $2,000. Where do they spend? And he said, banking, said, that's banking why system. <laughs> exactly, you know, you go to your default mode Compliance. saying, "Oh, it's risky money. Me, people, people might steal it." And 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 he was asked actually, how many people misuse that money? He said it's negligible. The majority of the people are good people and use it to the mm. to make sure that the guest experience is, you know, the of top. the highest standards, so that the guests come 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 back again. Mm. So the thing is that. Uh, you see one industry how they treat uh, innovation or service, yeah. and the other industry completely, opposite. you know, uh, opposite. Yeah. So I, I, think, I, I my advice is always yeah. keep it simple. Simple. I think the space, the space to people to play around, to come up with creative ideas. I think that's the best thing to do. I guess if I'm not mistaken, right? That, that's what you're saying. You, yes, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen companies spend a lot of money on parties and year-end parties and god knows what town halls and <laughs> yeah, if you take that budget budget yeah give it to the people and tell them mm. test with it. try yeah. new things mm. have you thought take them for an innovation course you know Correct. get somebody like me to speak to them mm. and you know open their horizon mm. uh you know and see what happens you know test you know mm. we cannot mm. progress mm. without trying and testing right. Right. So, moment as we are saying this, um, as we are coming to the end of our conversation, I just want to get a couple of things from you. What would be your recommendation in terms of creating an innovation-led culture? What would be your recommendation? I I think it takes two to tango. First, first the leadership should acknowledge that okay, we cannot progress, we cannot compete, uh, we cannot uh, basically uh, delight our uh, clients, customers without mm. having something new. Mm. I remember, you know, the late Maj Mr. Majid Al Fatim okay. of Al Fatim uh, Malls. He he uh, he used to tell ask people whenever they meet anybody. He said, "What's new?" Mm. And that's simple. And, and I read it in uh, in one of the posts of one of the executives of Al Fatim, and that struck a. Mm. Uh, and the other thing of him as well mm. is uh, he used to walk the talk. So I saw him, you know, in one of the uh, Carrefour, who was one of the 
franchises mm. of the of the company he goes and checks himself he does not only listen to his management mm. team he has to see it mm. Mm. so uh, going back the leadership has to take action G- make it easy make it safe for to for people to take uh, expect to experiment and mm. fail mm. it's okay to fail you know mm. there is no culture of failure in in our uh, basically culture yeah. in general it's always punishment culture sorry failure is punishment in fact you know if you take that sarah blinken example failure i'll give you more uh, basically if you fail more mm. that's the attitude mm. the other thing it, it, it takes two to tango is the employee mm. you should take some calls you know you should uh, have some guts mm. uh, don't you know those who have guts these are the ones who will progress in mm. in any organization mm. It mm. takes, you know, if you want the glory, you have to suffer, you know. Exactly. If you want to win a battle, you have to lose some soldiers. That's that's normal. That's the way life uh, moves on. Absolutely. If you don't take risks, nothing will happen. As somebody was saying, you know, ships are very safe at the port or the harbor. But that, that is not what they are built for. They are built of to sail. See, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. I think that's that makes a lot of sense, right? Um two aspects which Mohammed said is one is the leadership perspective what exactly you want to do with the innovation piece and the employee perspective how do you really take up this particular culture so ladies and gentlemen that's the time what we have for today my key takeaway is from Mohammed is give some space give some play time come up with their own way of doing things and of course i think our listeners got plenty of takeaways from today's episode my heartfelt thank to uh, mohammed altaj partner tough love and speaker and innovator as well uh, you can get connected to uh, mohammed through his uh, linkedin profile he have some fantastic i recommend highly recommend to read that dinosaur article um, it gives a lot of insight and input um, yeah uh, mohammed quick question have you been uh, Have you visited Sri Lanka before anywhere? Yes, yes, yes. We have I used to been... work for Unilever. Okay. I I, I of, of course uh, to Colombo but we went to uh, New Aurelia. New Aurelia, right. Yeah, Fantastic. because I was the tea brand manager then. I love ah. the country, love the people. Fantastic. I I I hope I I can come and visit again. Please, please, because um, I'm, I'm promoting Sri Lankan tourism on this particular podcast so that's why I just want to get an insight from you as well. Very so with... uh, very lovely country and very lovely people. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to see you in Sri Lanka. I'm just one call away for your assistant as well. So with that, thank, thank you, you Mohammed. Thank you very much for your valuable My time. My pleasure. Thank you very much, Azim.